play. This could be huge. Oh, that is just a fight. That Kevin 07 was not someone to be messed with, and nor were order. 7 3. They took down Wildcard. We will be moving on, but before we do so, Dev, I need to hear your final thoughts on that because this is a new day for order. Open and shut, cracking match. What an explosive game. Love to see it. Cutie. <laughs> Insane. A joker also pumping it real hard. That was just such a good game. Uh, Wildcard have fallen once again. Mm. And this time it's to the new order. Olympus has fallen, that is for damn sure, and may continue to fall. That's the unfortunate side of it all. But ladies and gentlemen, before we move on, it's a good chance to, to kind of stop and, and chat very quickly. We've got our beautiful sponsors living back on board again. Apparently wearing their merch, really comfortable. They have a beautiful message. I'm pretty sure you can see that there. It ain't weak to speak. We're looking to break the stigma of mental health. Be sure to get out and chat with everyone. Now, of course, if you want to be wearing sick ass merch like I am right now, you can get 15% off. That's right, OCN15. When you go to their store, you just need to do that on the promo code. Uh, and just for a little bit more information, you can type exclamation mark Livin, L-I-V-I-N in chat. It'll take you to where you need to go. But honestly, they have been an excellent sponsor to have on board. We yeah, had them on board sure. at, at the end of stage two last year. And to be honest, it, it's just such an incredible message, such a powerful way of getting it out. So I would recommend that from the bottom of my heart. Um, and yeah, Dev, I'll let you say anything if you want to. Uh, I'll let the floor That's stay it. open there. It's such a good message. Um, I think especially in 2020 and 2021, it's been a very challenging year for everybody in the world. And uh, it's really important to talk about mental health and mm -hmm. really important to stay on top of your mental health. It is a serious problem that you need to, to look into and you need mm -hmm. to make sure that you have it under control. So talk to people, uh, Livin has resources as well. So. Um, it's just such a great thing to be able to talk about here on broadcast. It is. It is a beautiful message, and it's, it does hit close to home. So it's it's something that we will forever uh, encourage and incorporate into this as much as we can. But we get to move on into our final matchup of the day. We leave behind the three that we've already seen, and we head to LFO and Bliss. This is an interesting one for me i really don't know how i feel about this i think this is the matchup that has split us the most in terms of predictions dev it's because there's two teams that we're kind of unsure about at this point it's difficult to be able to peg one down or another both teams have had great heights and also some significant lows lfo in particular really struggled in ocn after a very strong six masters bliss have had a mixed season, but here we go with LFO. These guys have actually made some significant roster changes to the lineup that you might be aware of. Hills, Sogs, Nasty, Sushi, and Jigsaw with Enigma, Jose himself as the coach. <laughs> uh, look, these boys really brought the fire. They came in through six masters, through the open qualifiers. They were the only team that hadn't played pro league in the fast, but man, they brought the fire. They took down Wildcard, the only team to take off uh, a map off of Wildcard throughout the entire of Stage 1 last year in the Six Masters, and that's nothing to be scoffed at. No, no, not at all. It's definitely, it's a, it's a nice little highlight point. Um, and of course, you know, I'll be completely honest, this, this roster can do so much damage. And every single person I've talked to, you know, whether it be from Wildcard, I think Elevate uh, Digital, last time I spoke to him, LFO is the team that they least like versing because of how their play style is. It is so fluid and free moving. It is incredibly hard to get a read on them. And that makes them extremely dangerous. Now, you look back at results from the end of last year, so many of their games go to 7-4, 7-5, but they just aren't able to get over that hurdle toward the end. I'm sure they're looking to break that this year but they are a roster that will just push you to your limits time and time again. Uh, so this one tonight, I think this is a big starting point for LFO. They really can, they have that shock value. They have that wow, uh, you know, that wow factor that I think kind of 
uh, can lack sometimes on on early developing teams in terms of how long they've been in the scene. They are the second freshest team we have in Oceanic Nationals. So they have a fair bit to prove this season. Uh, That's it. But they also had incredibly, like, a, an amazing performance through the OCN playoffs last year. They actually eliminated Elevate, who had managed to get a top three run throughout the regular season. LFO knocks them out, and even within one round of knocking out order. So these guys have had some amazing performances. We'll have a look at the player, or rather the team, they're coming up against. That is the X. Ferox roster, Team Bliss, and to be honest, really excited to be welcoming Team Bliss, not just to the Oceanic Nationals, but to Rainbow Six in general. They are, I mean, I really like the whole vibe that they have going on, but this is the roster. Oh, yeah. Shade, Todd, Nazgul, Oda, and Repix. I, like, <sighs> close but no cigar. I think that this is, like, a lot of what the teams at the, you know, the bottom end of the table that we always talk about this, this roster right here, minus Sushi from last year, came so close to beating Wildcard uh, on Clubhouse. They were up like 5-1 or 6-1 at one point. So just like LFO, you can't sleep on them. There's no team you can sleep on in Oceanic Nationals. Uh, is there any any particular player you're looking to for, for the impact here? Well, the newest player on this team is Nazgul, and the big thing with Naz is that he was the MVP of the Oceanic 2020 relegation. So he had the top rating, the highest overall KD, and then we have uh, Oda also coming in for the highest costs. These guys ended up coming first place through those relegations and ended up earning their spot way back in. You've also got Repix, who's a very well-known uh, content creator here in our local region, and the Scourge of Ranked. So he is a, a massive player also you want to watch out for. I hear he's pretty good at soccer as well from those interviews. Oh, you know so what? You, you know definitely what? want to watch out for his shots. No, you know what? Try and put it past me. Try, <laughs> try and score against me. I oh. dare you. I dare you, son. Take I want to see MVP that. And, and you can go and sit and cry in a corner, I reckon. No, I'm kidding. Okay, that's a bit aggressive. That, no, no, mate. This is, this is actually something we need to do for a piece of concept. Yes. You you coach and professionally <laughs> as a, uh, a keeper, and he likes to think he's pretty good at taking shots. So I want to see that happen. We'll wait and see. We'll see. We'll see who comes out on the better half of that one. So we can move forward now. And uh, a little bit of salt for Epix there. You can uh, <laughs> think what you will, say what you will, but... We'll move forward. Matt Vitos, what are we thinking? Where are we going? Is there any particular map that may favor Bliss a little bit more? I feel like Bliss is coming in uh, the underdog in this one. Yeah, well, it's funny because Bliss did lose last time these teams played each other back at OCN. They played on Oregon, LFO won, but it was a close 7-5. If we go back to Oregon, it's possible that it could be an LFO game once again, but Bliss has started to make some improvements, and since then, they've taken some pretty strong wins on Oregon, including taking down Rhythm, which was a big game for them and, and got them out of that relegation spot. So it could well be Oregon. If so, I'm thinking it's going to be pretty tight. I I hope it is Oregon because that, I mean, it makes the most sense, right? So let's have a look. We'll bring it up and we'll figure out where we're going for our final game of the night. We head to Clubhouse, which doesn't have the best track record for LFO, but I only say track record in terms of them losing. It was 6-8 last time they played Knights, and that was their one of their most recent games. So this really can uh, open the floodgates for results here. Uh, as for Bliss, though, Dev, they've got a pretty impressive record themselves, six and three. Absolutely, but if you start to dig a bit deeper into that, a lot of those games that Bliss has played on Clubhouse are part of the LPL Pro from last year, which is essentially equivalent to the Challenger League. Um, and a lot of that was against teams that you would expect they win. PC419, Elemental, uh, Shadownet, Skyfire, or the old Skyfire. The these are not... Teams that you would expect to challenge Bliss. So I don't want yeah. to read too much into those results. If you look a bit deeper, though, we do see both of these teams have a close result against a really strong team. Bliss went 7-8 on Clubhouse. You already mentioned that in the OCN before. The incredibly close game where Bliss almost beat Wildcard. And also more recently, uh, in fact, LFO's most recent official game at the end of last mm -hmm. year, 
was a 6-8 loss on Clubhouse to the Knights. So both mm. teams have had very close games against very strong teams on this map. And it's good that it's so fresh. It's so fresh in our minds. It allows us to have a good picture. But you can wipe that clean because it's 2021. It's stage one of the Oceanic Nationals. And guess what? It's day one. This is where we can start to build for LFO and Bliss. We head to Clubhouse, a formidable map in the Oceanic region. We see it every night. <laughs> and here it is, LFO and Bliss to kick off their Oceanic Nationals 2021 campaign. As you say, on Oceania's favorite map, Clubhouse, once again, that's three for three, Thatch bands here on Clubhouse tonight. Let's see. We're gonna see the Hibana followed up as we've seen both previous games. No, the Thermite, what? That is not the wow. hard, that is the least likely hard bridge I would expect to get banned out. But I mean, you're just gonna see Maverick every round. So I don't see why that's a big deal. What bliss, what are you doing, mate? The mute ban, this is unprecedented. The last time they banned mute was in LPL Pro last year against Exto. I don't really see that being that relevant right now, but okay, that I'm I'm <laughs> I'm just bewildered and befuddled. Uh -huh. yeah, there might. That's a see you later mute <laughs> and Kai to to finish it off. Those hatches are, are going to be free real estate, uh, unless of course they've got something whipped up the sleeve. Cheeky little, I don't know, you know what? I'm not even going to go ahead and, and try to uh, try to predict this because Sushi is on the Cav. Surely that's the sixth pick. Surely they're not sticking the Cav. It is CCTV. Oh. And hey, I got a little bit. I, I was excited for a second <laughs> there, but makes a little more sense. A bandit to come out to finish up. So all good. Yeah, you're getting a bit debated there, but the bandit's a, a curious one. I guess... <laughs> So, you can't really ban it trick when Maverick's in, right? Because they'll just Mav open the wall. But your mute is also banned, so you can't mute up bottom garage. So I guess Sushi would usually be playing the mute here to mute up bottom garage. And so, since it's banned, um, he's decided to go onto the bandit instead, I guess. But for now, let's have a look at that community vote. Bliss does edge out 64-36. Uh, despite LFO winning the last time these two teams clashed, Bliss does have the upper hand. I find that very interesting. Maybe the power of an org. If you're interested, maybe a cheeky little org out there could pick up LFO. They've been looking for a while. But if you do want to get involved in the community, in the uh, Snap Fitness community vote, make sure you head over to Twitter, Rainbow Six uh, Oceanic Esports, and the old Snap Fitness AU. That's where you want to find them and get involved. We love to have a chat about it and maybe it gives us a good indication. <laughs> oh, hello. Oh hello. my God. What? All right, what? L LFO, I like it. This is, uh, it's not every day you see a mirror on Clubhouse. She was actually banned earlier today as well. Let through the ban face here. And now Todd got the precarious job of mavericking open this wall. Now, for <laughs> now, that mirror window is not a threat, but Sushi pops it. And now it's nigh impossible to Maverick here, but of course that open mirror window works both ways and the attackers have those high-powered weapons with those ACOGs. You can see Repix getting some good info here. Heels still has a mirror in pocket, gonna place that on the construction wall. Reloading. Well, that's really interesting. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm intrigued to see how this works out you now with, with such an open area. It doesn't look like they can really play for it just yet, but Todd, what's the decision here? Because it's going to be tricky, to say the very least, to try and open that up. What do you think, Dev? You cut your losses, try to open something else. <laughs> no, there we go. There oh, we go. how scuffed is that? <laughs> that is one of the. I think that is one of the most cursed what? images I've ever seen, Dev. I mean, that's the. That's what. That's what LFO are leaning into, right? They chuck the mirror on there. They decide, look, guys, let's just absolutely throw a spanner in the works. Thermite and mute ban let's make this as scuffed as possible but bliss have taken some good control they've got bottom garage and here comes the barrage of flashbangs and utility nazgul clears 
the path for the barbed wire. Still that player upstairs, Todd. Picks off the first player, and Nazgul looking to find this. Jigsaw punishes him, looking for a second court in the corner, but he oh. finds another kill. What is that? Todd finally gets his second, but Jigsaw is not to be messed with. Oh, he wow. finds another one, but Todd goes for three. And now Bliss just begging the to to pieces up. Wow. What a response from Todd. Needed to happen. Jigsaw was picking them apart we've seen a highlight like that before now they're going to go ahead and come up the garage door sogs with a nasty little bullet hole at least finds the one can delay the c4 is there as well where that has been prepped you you had better hope that he's going to be able to find todd as he makes his way in what didn't find it todd going for plant repix to cover Careful not to go too aggressive on oh. the ankle. That's one all on heels. Oh. And Repix does the job. He covers perfectly. And Bliss take the round. Well, may look back at that with a misplaced C4. Could be a determining factor in that round. The smoke unable to deny for long enough. And I mean, that that's what you need from Repix there, right? Like you, you want to be seeing a very firm hold, ensuring that no one gets that time of day. This from Jigsaw, just nasty. Nearly, I mean, like, finds a third there, and you've, I mean, you're, you've more than done your job after the first. After the first kill, the second kill, maybe. You love to see it, though. Down to Church and Arsenal. They're not going to go and try to re-attempt it. Keep on moving and keep on bringing the mirror. LFO do seem to like that operator that we often see banned out. Don't get to see a lot of uh, the limelight these days. It's very powerful, but the thing about the mirror is as soon as there's a mirror window, it's a problem for the attackers to solve. But it's a problem that you, you kind of know what you have to do a lot of the time, at least at this level, perhaps at Know, playing casual or ranked you stare at that mirror window and you're like well now i can't move because if i peek it i'm gonna die but at this level right a mirror window is a, a a problem ready to be solved whether it's by smoke grenades by vertical game by grenades mm. or by a twitch drone there are so many different opportunities and it's a really there are some teams that really like that they see a problem and they're ready to to work around it and it's not a usual dump like trying to deal with the wamai jaeger it's a lot more achievable often especially as we can see there are smoke grenades on odor on the ace definitely a good way to block those lines of sight of the mirrors now you 30 seconds gone wasted into the round and i think alifo really that's a yeah I, I don't think they'll be happy with that kind of a round loss expected a little bit more in that circumstance so now my question is, what does the bounce back look like? They threw a spanner. They tried to make some cheeky little plays. And as we head to basement, which is arguably one of the more comfortable sites, have to see them convert this and convincingly because Bliss, well, they've got the community vote and so far they've got a fair few votes from the commentators. It's on them to take this attack. Bit of an old style strategy from LFO. Choosing to forfeit blue with a mirror window at the green box. Dummies looking in to hold blue. There's a lot of ways the attackers can deal with that. But for now, their focus lies on using the Habana, who's managed to sneak through the ban phase and open up this hatch. Vulnerable to the impact trick. That's what Jigsaw is here for. Impact's in his pocket. Keen to go for it. He lands it again, so his time delay, really, it's not going to... Oh, actually, Shade's only got four left, but mm. the ace charge goes off, also tricked. Still, we need three of those x to detonate. That's the final ace charge. It does blow, so even just two more would do the trick, and it looks like that's uncontested for the final pellets, leaving the hatch open. Nice opening from Hills there. Nazgul down. 
Frag, it'll go with it as well. So now you see LFO turtling on site, happy to play from much deeper lines. And with 30 seconds, Bliss have got to get a move on here. Todd can at least take Sushi. That's a good piece of the puzzle. That's the smoke down. A lot of delay. Sogs up close, manages to trade Shade, but it should never have been a trade in the first place. It's going to get tight. It's going to get awkward here, but Sogs will step up for another and ensure that there's no movement in. Wow. Too close to call. Todd can't get past Nasty. And LFO will walk away with the round. Massacre at the end of it, a bloodbath. Players' bodies flung forward on both sides, but massive step up from Sogs on the Jaeger at that power position. The dummies mirror window proving to be oh so effective, and he just holds down that fort. Let's get a good replay of that, using the mirror to its full extent. One player down, looks towards Dirt, finds the second, just so good. Even though he lost this fight, Hill's there to cover. Todd, hopeless at the end of the day. LFO, good way to get back and show that they can give as much as they receive. Oh my goodness, it's... It's exactly what we needed for from LFO's perspective. That's the round that you really want to make your statement, right? Yeah, <laughs> you pull some what I would consider to be cheese strats in the first round. That's fine. You play around with it a little bit, missed C4, a couple of chances gone begging. I mean, I would argue I'd play devil's advocate and say that Jigsaw was a huge reason as to why they even had a, a shoe in in that first round nearly a 3k just sitting on the rafters of garage but now moving forward we're going to see a little bit more of a <laughs> a normal play style from lfo i say normal but lfo or anything but normal this time they are as you said changing this a little bit but the aruni i don't know if i would call it normal as of yet we haven't really seen enough of her, of course, outside of scrims, which unfortunately, not often privy to. Um, Sushi's the other one that's changed. The Valkyrie being brought out. Instead of that mirror window, Hills has moved on to the Bandit. And uh, seeing where Bliss decided to push. Last time it was very much garage-centric take, but as you mentioned, Jigsaw was such a, a force to be reckoned with on that. Where are these Aruni gates? Is there one on that exterior door? Can't quite tell, unfortunately. Garage door, looks like yeah, it. I think so, yeah. Yep, smack bang on the money. So there's one. Just means that it burns an extra projectile, right? So, you know, you've got to sink all your projectiles into the ADSs and the Wamais, and Aruni just adds one extra on top of that. There and you if go. you can manage to reset the Aruni gate, it does even more. Conda Cash. That's the other the other gate. And Bliss, I mean, look, I, I think that Bliss will have the play style to be able to do this. I think that they can adapt. Well, not even adapt. There's no need for adapting. But Shade, oh, wow. Shade looking for the early contact here. Nasty trying to take the fight. Has a little bit of cover, but also has a secondary player. That second nade's going to force him out of position. This has to be the kill. They've got to crunch him. Somehow, oh, oh my god, nasty. That is absolutely oh. filthy. A double kill. That's Shade and Nazgul both gone down. Nasty still has this position all to himself. Bliss need to start to recompose. Todd was a massive driving force behind Bliss's success in the first attack onto this bomb site. And he's downstairs, but Nasty's going huge. The Aruni punch one hits that barricade. Sox finds nothing for it. Todd caught completely unregarded. Is Sushi downstairs? All on Repix. One v five. Barely an inkle of a chance. And Sogs, I was wondering where that final gate was. It was in the pocket the whole time. Epix has got to hope this is one for the highlight reel. And that's one more projectile done and dusted. 
Red picks would have to hope for a pretty gnarly <laughs> shot. Surely that wasn't Hills. Surely Hills was not the... No. Oh, no. Not like this. Oh. Of course. Oh, damn it, Hills. <laughs> that's gnarly. That is absolutely gnarly. Well, that's another round in the bag for LFO. The more comfortable they can make this first half, the better off they are going to be. We head to gym and bedroom after two successful defenses. That's that clash is continuing to be flashed generally six picked will it be again is gym and bedroom we haven't seen that as of yet might actually be stuck at the moment not locked in but neither is the mirror now mirror is an operator that is actually super common on this objective it is sogs who takes that six pick moves over to the valkyrie can enable some more of that aggression that we've seen from LFO. A little bit more of those <laughs> ambitious plays looking for something, looking for an opportunity to make a play. Heels on the mirror. Looks like he's going to have some kind of util or mirror window over here on the cash side. Usually you'll see the uh, bathroom position is the primary one, but you can use one top red. You could even use one or somewhere else in cash get a little bit creative you see them sometimes in the little uh secret stash room which is just over a little, that little nook in logistics looks like hills is just over here to make rotations and reinforce a bit late on their setup unfortunately i wonder if they may be just starting to decide some changes of uh heart mid-round because the way that hills is over there for quite a long time still gonna put down his mirror windows We'll see how it goes. And it looked like, as you said, around the logistics area for Hills, there's the bathroom mirror. So at the very least, the prep's been done. And where this secondary mirror goes, unless we've misplaced one that's been shut down, which it hasn't done. So... It's all fine and dandy. Nazgul and Repix both together going to be pushing in quite uh, with a quite prone attack. Shade to just add an additional number and that player across on red. They're going to try to make this a run through so it makes it just that, that little bit easier to take this engagement with Jigsaw. I've seen Jigsaw play these Heavy anchor positions very effectively so far at top rafters. What oh. the nade comes through, he dodges it, gets out of dodge safely, pushes further back. Sacrifice of the top red stairs. A lot of pressure now applied by Bliss. I like this hold, I like this push. They've done a good job to start to really put the pressure on these roamers, but there's still a player in cash, or did that player manage to get out? I think they're. No, just made it out. Yeah. So. Fortunately for LFO, they get five players away with their lives. But this is some very important ground taken. Decent time management. Minute 15 to play. Hello? All right. I, I All don't right. know. Surely that wasn't on a drone or anything like that. I don't know what's happened for Repix there. But Jigsaw just having the warning shots thrown his way from the bedroom and you can see now looking to push all oh, my word i thought for a second was looking to engage it is nazgul after all trying to put a little bit of pressure on hills there oh you love it from hills. what is that catches the aggression off no one's watching the rotate and he gets away absolutely scot-free another blind nade from todd doesn't know the player's already moved out of that position may well have been an evil eye there i didn't quite catch it todd now don't believe jacuzzi's open could rotate over there. Oda, though, keen Ooh. on this push. Hills traded. Second on the round now. Jigsaw downed. Hills likely to be able to pull off a revive here. It's just Todd and Shade to push this. Shade pushes on forward. He's ready. Keen on the angle, but the other vector comes alive. And it's a full house for the vectors. Nasty. Cleans up the final two kills. And LFO looking very comfortable. It's a great way of putting it. Comfortability <laughs> is almost key. They feel like they're kicking back, smoking cigars. Absolutely nothing to it. 
But of course, as we hit the full sweep of defensive sides, obviously, eliminating Bar. Head back down into the Church and Arsenal defense, which I would say had some heroics from Sogs that managed to pull them across the line in that kind of mid-engagement toward the latter part of the round. It gave them room to breathe, room to move. One thing LFO are not afraid of doing at all is having any individual fires. You see it all the time. If they see an opening and they see a 1v1, I think that's the key, is you have to... You do have to identify the 1v1 before you make that decision, but you do see the initiative of them moving straight into it. And... Nellifo's had a lot of success doing that, right? Those aggressive players have frequently paid off. Yeah. That said, a couple of uh, operator changes compared to the last time they defended this site. The main thing I'm looking at is that you've lost your Jaeger and your Amai for a Valkyrie and a Mozzie. Now, you're losing two operators that excel at protecting... Your defenders who are anchoring, defenders who mm. are playing a position to hold. And you pick up two new operators that are gathering information. And of course, Mozzie is denying information. And since Mute is banned, he's the only information denial operator of his sort. And that really just tells me that LFO want to lean even more so into that aggression. So as to not get caught out by grenades, flashbangs, and whatever else the Jaeger devices and magnets may have defended from. from. Instead, they're going to try and use this information to make plays and oh okay i did not expect repix to try and move in there he has done and it's it's forced jigsaw a little bit further into blue the issue is always going to be the second there's an opportunity they will likely claw at it and claw at it until they've ripped it to pieces but a minute down, and they still have uh, little to no control. And in fact, it's no control on that top floor. You can see slowly... Oh, that's an ambitious C4, and you'll love to see it. We saw the pre-placed uh, cam from SOGS back in CCTV under the, uh, the bracket. So plenty of information to go off there. It's unfortunate that it didn't hit its mark at the end. And his hatches start to get worked on. Pretty sure every single play here from LFO is downstairs. So it's crazy to think that Bliss have spent so much time trying to clear the map. When one, two, three, four, and then the fifth one's in dirt. So, yep, absolutely. All these LFO players safe and snug on the site with pretty good anchor positions behind the mirror windows. And Bliss, I mean, the onus is totally on them to speed up and start to get ready for an execute. They've got to deal with these positions, these mirror windows and start to load up. And you could see how worked it, how well it worked for Sogs in that first defensive round on Church, just being able to sit in around the dummies and use that mirror window to just such great effect. Picks making the way down. Still needs to be cautious of any swing from behind the Jenny. Ooh, an ex Kairos. Could destroy the mirror if it detonates. Sogs uses an impact to clear it. That is a massive play. Almost loses his life for it, but it was 100% worth it. And now Bliss have even more work to do to try and remove this position. Oh, Jigsaw can get all the information in the world. He's going to be able to relay that to the rest of LFO. There's two players coming from blue. Where are the remaining players? They're going to tunnel in here. Try to force oh. the fading of the shots. Repix with a great little shimmy. Bliss execute perfectly. And Sogs and Hills left to pick up the pieces. That would have been it. That would have been it. Sogs just missing the shots. And it gives Bliss the lifeline they needed. What an execute. That was nuts. And you said it. The shoulder peak. That little shimmy from Repix along with the explosion of Bliss players onto that Arsenal side. It was exactly what they needed. They definitely did not have a, an enviable position, and they executed to perfection, overwhelming LFO like a crashing wave, and managing to force down that plant long enough to clean up the pieces. Suddenly gets them back into this game, a second attack round win on the half.
One last chance for LFO to further their lead or for Bliss to even things up. On that note, straight back down. Defenders, protect your re attempting the basement. And I like it. To be honest, you win your ones there, and that's a that's a round win on the board. And you're headed back to CCTV, so I'm sure LFO know exactly what happened and how they're going to fix it. And we'll see as well the effectiveness of, of SOGS on that Intel Gatherer on the Valk, of course. That gave at least one chance for the C4 to, to find its mark, to hit the hit the number. But it was a very it was very much an isolated C4, you'd have to say. It was all the way over at CCTV. Attackers are moving out to locate a bomb and but it nearly hit. And that could have been detrimental for Bliss. It would have, it, you know what? It would have even further held them back from taking any kind of roam control, which was already lacking from the beginning. See LFO playing a bit more aggressive this time. Here's Hills. Just waiting for someone to smack that window. Can Bliss punish this? Oh. Wow. Wow, Sogs. I take it that was over in Garage and looking up through oil for that kill. And I feel like every time something's gone uh, Bliss's way, it's been Ripix that's been able to make that work and, and able to open up the game a little bit. So him being out, I think that's detrimental. It's definitely a big one. Why the extra two pellets on there? You only need three. I don't understand what happened there, but all right. Rookie. Rookie. Anyhow, maybe he's not used to having Havana unbound on Clubhouse these days. <laughs> Must be taking lessons from Xenox. <laughs> <laughs> As aggression on the main stairs here for Hills, taking out a drone now. Just need to not feed him. They need to punish him. Todd as well, watching Blue, still a lot of possibilities here for Bliss, and Hills is so stubborn. His rotate is cut off, but he's still committing to holding this angle. This is the aggression that we expect to see from LFO, and it may well work for him. A C4 rattles out, doesn't find anything. And there's the angle just engaged by Hills as Shade breezes on past. Bit of a scratch, but nothing. Constitutes a mortal wound. Nazgul starting to push on down, looking to take out that mirror window with his Selma, and it might have just done it. Oh no, it didn't! Oh, what? It's huh? only breached underneath it. He didn't manage to take out the mirror window. This second one is surely going to finish it off. There we go. And suddenly, this church wall is wide open. There we go. Drop into Modo Oda. Looking for the initial engagement. There's a fair bit still here to do. Oh. Here for Bliss. Sogs finds the perfect timing, but Shade manages to retrieve the kill. The flash in now, and that may have been the initiation for Shade, but it's slowed down. Nazgul finds the perfect timing, the perfect angle, and that may well have toppled the defense for LFO. Hills has to swing with two players left, one holding the plant, looks to rotate across. I don't know where oh, he is. Nazgul hasn't heard it. Oh, oh, too close for comfort. Way too close for comfort. That Just barely stealing that back for Nazgul. That is, oh man, that is gut-wrenching. Hills. Just, oh, just, just. And just like that, we're going to go to a break. We'll see you in a second. And just like that, we're back. <laughs> it just happens like that, you know? But However, we're not in game yet. There is a re-host. No. <laughs> there is a re-host. It's our 
the funnest part of the night are our re-hosts. It's the most joyous occasion. Maybe not for you guys, because you have to see our faces, but we turn it into a podcast. So, you know, it's six in one, half a dozen in the other. Okay, when you see a puppy dog face like that, I don't know how you can ever think that it's not a good idea. Dev, uh, that first half, I'm a little confused. I thought LFO had that in the bag, looking at a 4 2 5 1 kind of half. Yeah, I very much agree with you. But back to back attacks from Bliss on the Church Arsenal was really what well, the doctor ordered. LFO couldn't yeah. keep up. Uh, despite continuing to try and change their strategy, I really liked it from them. You know, they tried that first time they defended it, they had a different operator lineup. They started to tweak some things. They move the mirror around onto a different person. They bring the Jaeger. They bring the Mozzie. They try and play more aggressively. And it's a mixed bag, right? And I feel like that's the thing about aggression. It's uh, it, it's not always an open and shut case, right? You can play a bit aggressively and sometimes you get punished. Sometimes you, you, you get a couple kills. And really, the mark of a great player is one that can just manage that perfectly and juggle that balance and, and find it where it needs to be. So I guess that's a very oh god that shimmy is so nasty from Repix yeah. like that was that was gnarly I'm not gonna lie so but I I would have to I would have to say that LFO from last year's performances is just one of those teams that are just so dangerous with how they play and it's really hard to get a proper read on them I will say that it felt like uh, Bliss were almost running around sometimes like a headless chook. That's a, it sounds like a really bad analogy, and, and I understand that, and I apologize for any offense to Bliss. <laughs> but it did feel like they were getting caught uh, quite quite often trying to uh, scramble to, to find something on the side of LFO. So I like the I like the little cheese strap with the things like the mirror windows in the, in the first round. Like, I'm all about that kind of stuff. Um, but again, I, I, I do think that from LFO, I don't think the teams are going to allow that moving forward. I think there's a lot of teams that will be able to absolutely uh, just punish you for some, for any kind of uh, little irregular irre note. Oh, yeah, God, I can't I, think of the word now. Irregular um, totally fits, I reckon. Yeah, okay, you get what I'm saying there. It's hey, it's been a long night, okay, but it, it really. I'm trying to. I cannot think of the word I was going to go for there. But regardless, there are teams that will pay, will make you pay for something like that. Yeah, absolutely. And Bliss is uh, not a flawless team, but also they're very, very strong. And there are moments where Bliss starts to struggle to deal with that aggression. We've seen some mm. really nice plays, in particular, I'm thinking at the rafters defending Cash. Great multi kills from Jigsaw. I think Nasty managed one as well. And it's, it's multi-kills like that, moments where Bliss just starts to fall apart. But once they start to get back on their horse and build that momentum, once they start to get the clear comms coming through, that's when Bliss looks really strong. And now they're moving onto their defense. And all they've got to do is win four out of the next six rounds. And they take this and the three points alongside it. But LFO certainly have a, uh, a lot going for them as well. And you look at the last time... These teams played each other. I already I mentioned it. Bliss did fall to LFO on Oregon. LFO mm. came victorious 7 4. Yeah. So there's definitely a chance here to see that same story repeat, but I do have a feeling that Bliss are going to make a stronger comeback in the second half. I'm not going to lie, it's pretty crazy. You know, Bliss only have to win like four rounds, but you know, like in a game, you only have to win seven of 12. You know, it seems pretty simple when you put it like that. It's. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm oh, sorry. I just had to, I had to use it. It was there. Uh, right, it was wide open. I think you know, I love, you know, I love you. So I know. there's no, no questions there. It's, it's all bro home love. So. Now we get to see LFO on their attacking side, which I would argue is when I find them at their most dangerous. Um, I, I know that, you know, on defense, you you dictate the tempo, you can dictate the pace. It's up to you whether you roam, whether you flank, whether you anchor. But I do feel like there's a certain pace to LFO that I don't know if a lot of teams can match there. You can see Sogs playing with maybe a C4 that could have been pre-placed on the edge of Kitchen. And nothing's been hit yet. Nevada on the table means that this impact trick game is going to be much less prevalent. And there you go. <laughs> Not a minute off the clock. And 
Kitchen hatch is already done and dusted, but LFO haven't dealt at all with this roam game, and we do see Todd up top cash stairs. I don't know whether there's anyone else. Okay, human repix. They're in a position where they could very quickly flank bar or even the top floor go for a main stairs flank. Even some vert holes through kitchen if they have a C4 or an impact. Shade has one in the pocket. Todd actually has a rotate Ooh. hole into bar. I didn't even realize, but LFO need to be really careful. And now he opens up this line oh. of sight straight into kitchen and loses his head for it. Great pre-fire from Sogs oh. and the wall bang. What is that? All of a sudden, at the flick of a switch, the plant's going down and it's Shade versus the world. Sogs picks up his third and LFO shut out the round. Then it literally a minute ago and I will say it again. There is a tempo to LFO that scares me on their attack. You've seen it there, and you will see it again. That was... I, I did not even get to see how long was left on the timer, honestly. But I, you know what? I, I will put my hand up and say I absolutely love that uh, from Shade, I believe it was, with that opening into Kitchen. Just a little bit unfortunate with the timing and stuck around just too long to keep uh, an, an opening there. But I thought Hills was going to stick that, Carly. <laughs> shame yeah I, I don't really see the i mean the carly can have its uses but yeah it's just not as versatile need to locate and, um, defuse bombs. and you know the ash is just too good you can't say no to an ash right <laughs> there's not many times you can hey <laughs> it's funnily enough though ash and carly right you look at them and forget their uh guns and just look at their utility right they're both two speed. Uh, sorry, Ash is three speed, but like they're both operators with three explosives. Carly's got the three lances. Ash has the three breaching rounds, and they both have a breaching charge or a claymore. So in a lot of ways, they are very much equivalent operators in terms of the capability of their utility. The difference is, of course, Carly's explosives go through walls, whereas Ash's explosives can make a rotate hole, whereas Carly will only make a line of sight. Yeah. But at you know, face value, very similar amount of utility. Uh, and it's just a question of, okay, do we need it to go through the wall uh, or do we want to pick someone with a bit more fragging potential? And that's a decision mm. for Hills. Yeah. And I suppose a player like Hills, you would want the, the comfortability of the pick. You know, it's... <laughs> mm. For sure. At the same time, I've seen some players do really good work with that SMG that Carly has, SPS SMG. Um, mm. Really good nine. I think it's the, uh, really. I think it's called SMG nine. Really, really yeah. good. Yeah. I think realistically, outside of Sogs, you probably look to Hills to to do most of the uh, most of the damage. And it's going to be oh, that's oh, the a really nice trick. trick. Yeah, you could see it just on the edge of the screen then, and the impact as well. That's really well wow. played to deny them of... I think that's two Selma charges, maybe even a third. I didn't get to see or hear the sound cue, but that's massive. One left, yeah. okay. One, one Selma left, still six x Kairos pellets left as well, but they're going to have to be really, really careful how they use that. Usually you want a nice big opening on the kennel's wall, plus you want a line of sight and an entry hole here in Garage. Now we have the entry hole. So the next priority for that hard breach utility is definitely going to be making sure that Kennels is a strong breach for you to cover your eventual plan and also hopefully entry. Mm. Jigsaw, what is that? Next down Nazgul, and that is the Rafters player over peaking. Wow. Doesn't matter that you were my, doesn't matter you've got your discs. If you fall like that, that is massive. Opening that can definitely be capitalized on now. This is what I'm saying from Bliss. Where where can they step up? Sog's now taking... Well, taking the front at the very least. Always being careful of oil. You never know. You never know. But this is just massive. Look how much time is left on the clock. They have so much to play with here, Dev. I realize now that the way Nazgul died is they used some hard breach on the single reinforced wall at top rafters. Really smart use of the util there. You can see that breach right there. That's what enabled that kill. Nazgul mustn't have realized he didn't keep his head down enough. And so he lost it 35 seconds now. And you said it. LFO has such a strong position. This is going to be the execute in just a matter of moments. 
You can see in comes the first initial bait. Do they have anything oh. left? That's the C4, but it didn't get... Oh, it didn't get the diffuser. It went past. It caught one of them, but the trades are so good from LFO. It's a two versus three with a player down on Oda. And Repix, I mean, you've played pretty much out of your mind, but that is a huge order. And LFO, they take the round. And I would say in a convincing fashion. Very impressive attack there from LFO. You said it. As soon as that C4 went too deep and killed the cover up, not the planter, I think there was a bit of confusion in the Blizz camp. They're probably thinking, oh, okay, all good. We've, we've got the planter. We just need to kind of hold on for a bit. But then LFO had every single angle covered. A player outside the lobby door covering, I think it was Oda or Naz... Oh, yeah, no, Shade. Downstairs on the Malusi, running around and hoping to have, I believe, a C4 to jump in on that Plantanile game. And from that point forward, LFO, like you said, trade game, just cover and get that plant down. That's really the recipe for a round win. Attackers need to locate Yes, also a recipe for disaster if the C4 hits, so. <laughs> exactly, yeah. <laughs> gotta, be extra, gotta be extra careful. LFO, incredibly lucky that that C4 killed the cover and not the planter. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I, you know, imagine how confusing it would be as well. You see the kill come in and you think you've thrown it in the perfect yeah. place. That would, I, I could imagine how much that would tilt me. But so now as we look into this, there's only one C4 and it's on Repix. So that, that plant denial that we've seen previously, a little bit minimal, but I, I already know what you're going to say. I'm going to let you go for, go for glory here. Is that, is that four operators bringing impact grenades? That's four operators. Yeah. <laughs> bringing impact grenades there right. is some serious denial here yeah this is uh i mean i think bliss are the ones in denial of the fact that it's too hard to impact <laughs> trick the kitchen hatch when it is on the board uh because man if if nasty plays his cards right he just puts two pellets on every single time onto that hatch and he can do that nine times and there are only six impact grenades left because two were clearly used for rotations. They didn't get Nazgul to, to make it with Fail if they used the impact. So six impact grenades. Oh, five impact grenades. I don't know whether that was... Was that to deny an Xkaros? I didn't see an Xkaros on no, there. No, I didn't, I didn't hear any I either. Mean, I definitely do not think that this impact trick is going to be effective. Hang on, where's so, Oda? Give me a second. Where, where, where's Oda? There's where Oda is! Oh, no! <laughs> was, no! You hate to see it! Oh no. <laughs> well, today's uh, Seeing Into the Future Award goes to Mr. Manic Monday. And today's Being a Cheeky Little Rat Award going goes to Oda. And it looks like the bar has been contaminated. Oh, wow. Mm. And and like, look, look at Bliss's Rome still. It is gorgeous. It is blooming right now. You have three players off site. LFO still haven't dealt with two, but I like this from LFO. Change your decision oh, and make yes. it firm. This is the dirt push. This is what we love to see. The full commitment. And that hose sprays on down the older, but Nazgul's got a reload now. Can he hold on against four players pushing dirt? He sees the first and the oh. second the trade comes through, but another back again. Now Jigsaw needs to hold his own. He's got a massive amount of ammo in that gun. Sushi as well. Holds down. That's it, Jigsaw. Only two players left now on the LFO side against oh. two from Bliss. Shade has to find four. It's a 1v1. Sushi versus Shade. Absolutely massive from LFO. Shade manages to rotate through Modo. I don't know how much information they have right now. It looks like it's getting a ping. Sushi getting cornered now. Whoa. Shade with all of the information. This is so uncomfortable for Sushi. All he has to do is sit by time. Wait for the player to peek in Shade. That is just outplayed with that intel. But what a call from LFO. The decision to just send it through dirt. I have nothing wrong with that whatsoever. It almost worked as well if it wasn't for that evil eye at the back of Armory, right next to the AK rack, which you just saw on your screens. Man, that would have been a round for LFO had 
We not had Shade getting that info from his teammates thanks to that evil eye. Massive credit to uh, to Nazgul, he placed the evil eye there. I'm sure it was part of the strat. He did the best he could. I don't know how he didn't spray down Nasty, barely yeah. survived that. Big moves though from LFO and you just love to see that kind of massive commitment to a plan. And it's exactly what we were talking oh. about earlier, right? Like if you yeah. have your entire team commit to a pretty scuffed plan, it's gonna work better then if you have five different people commit to five different plans, yeah. so that's exactly what we just saw from LFO. It nearly worked out. And you know, I'm gonna go a step further there. I didn't realize because I couldn't hear, but Sushi was actually on top of a Banshee. So uh, not only was he being pinged out by the Maestro cam, but he was also being halted by the Banshee, which is just a nightmarish situation in a one versus one after what was such a chaotic entry into the actual site itself so uh, you can't really blame sushi in that situation now one thing that should also be mentioned is sushi is x bliss but you know that was the that was his team uh for ocn stage two so i'm sure there's a little bit of banter going back and forth between these teams uh and definitely something that will be held firm but Really happy for LFO to have made that. There were three players roaming, and there was... I, I honestly don't think LFO were going to have enough time to deal with the roam and also get those hatches open and put pressure on site. I just... I think it was like a minute 40, and they still hadn't even entered. So, kudos. And Bliss held strong. Bliss held really strong there. But let's be honest, that bullet hose should have absolutely massacred everyone. <laughs> yeah, definitely. A bit close there for Nazgul. Now we go back to CCTV cache. Last time, it's actually a successful banner trick, believe it or not. Oda trying to do the same again. I think Sushi and Co were a bit more careful. That single barricade at the top of Red Stairs prevents the concussion of Zafia from cancelling Bandit's animation, putting down the, uh, the util. So we'll see whether LFO have an adequate answer to that this time. Oh, this is nice from Hill. Oh, okay. Almost. It was almost nice from Hills. It was almost what they needed, but that's massive from Shade. They now have time. They now have space, and Jigsaw has to try and find the line. Shade re-peaking, over-aggressing in a certain phase, and if Shade had stay al stayed alive for longer there, I think that could have been massive for Bliss, but now there's a minute 30 left on that clock and LFO are going to have to start to get a move on. A lot of players on LFO, very separate. Very much pushing different places to try and complete the same objective, and that is to breach this wall open. I see four from Oda, doesn't find anything as soon as she gets out of dodge, but Oda's definitely done his job here, denying this wall. It's a tough ask now for LFO to try to clear it. Jigsaw's below. I think he cleared off the remainder of those bandit batteries. Oda's fallen back, but he's done his job. We still have Hard Breach remaining to open this wall, but Sushi and Nasty are on the other side of Garage. Not ready to do it just yet. Nazgul in this power position he was taken out last time through a nice hole in the rafters wall, but this time LFO don't have that. They're going to util sink him. Nazgul, blind as a bat. 30 seconds. Just doesn't feel like there's going to be enough time. And when push comes to shove and you've got Nazgul finding a kill, it makes it hard, but not impossible. This is it. Nasty gets picked back up. Are they going to funnel through Con here or are they going to go through the CCTV wall? They've got a lot to deal with. Oda with the sound cue, a little bit curious as to where they're going to be coming from. He holds firm on a CCTV wall. That's it. That's the round done. Put it in the back pocket. Bliss has been able to pull away with the round and a really well played from the defensive side. Patience proving to be a virtue there for Bliss. They knew that time was just ticking away for LFO. It took them so long to deal with that main wall. They eventually rotated to Garage and even then it was a challenge. Nascal found one before he was traded. And LFO is just too slow to pick up the pace. At the end of it, it's really just a desperate jump in through a window. Diffuser down. Bliss saw that. They just played time.
Smart moves from them. And now we're at a 5-5, Rob. We're getting very close to a potential for overtime. Mm. And this game has been incredibly tight between these two teams so far. Even in the first half, 3-3. And now even thus far, 2-2 in the second half. Attackers need to locate and no team really getting a leg up over the other. No. Bliss has successfully defended Church and Cash. And LFO successfully won those objectives attacking as well. So this is the first time we're seeing Jim and Bedroom from the Bliss guys. And we'll see, maybe that's the, the thing that they need to, to change it up. For sure. And I think uh, a really quick note, obviously, you know, talking about overtime and pushing it into it. This next round is, is really crucial because whoever takes it, like obviously, yeah, you go to match point, but you ensure at least one point. That's it. And, and that will be huge. You know, we look at the, the past results from LFO, from Rhythm, these teams that came incredibly close to beating some of the best teams. And if they had been able to draw a couple of games and have that point in the, like, in the bag last season, it would have been... What? Hello? What was no. that? Surely not. What on earth? earth was that that was not just a pre-fire through the bedroom window i mean i'm re-watching it right now on my my replay i don't know how he found that was that a uh, that was a spawn pick that was an attempted spawn pick uh, from I, nazgul as you i think i don't even well, know what's happened whatever it was he's uh he's gone see you later <laughs> He's gone, and it looks like Bliss are trying to pick up the pieces now. Not sure what's going on there, but look, at the end of the day, the point I was trying to make, the system that we now have, two points for an overtime win, one point for an overtime loss. OT is incredibly powerful for all of these uh, teams that we are considering on the bottom uh, the bottom half of the ladder because it does give you the point. It gives you an ability to, to kind of have that upper hand when we head to things like playoffs. Regardless, we can move that out of the way because... I've only got a minute 30 left on the clock here, and LFO have opened up Jacuzzi Wall. Man advantage, LFO, but they haven't started to address this cash side as of yet. Constantly cautious of the CCTV window. What is this run out? Ambitious from Todd. He's been on fire this game, but that's what? a wall bang and a half. No. What a read from Hills. Takes off Todd's head straight away. Open and shut case. Jigsaw continuing to do work <laughs> with this LMG. And the peak comes through. Repix scared off. A minute on the clock in the five versus three. LFO have everything going for them. As Repix looks to have another peak. How does he land that? And it's a double. No way. Repix has been unbelievable with some of these kills that he's been finding for Bliss. You see on these six kills on the clock, on the, uh, sorry, on the scoreboard for him, that does not paint the picture of what he's been doing. You can see Sushi now lining up, getting prepared. Dev, this is the execute that we need from LFO. They have to secure this plant, and then it is immediate post plant from there. Evil Eye looking to deny this plant. Gas as well, Sushi, his health just falling, and the gas finishes him. Nasty's got to pick up that diffuser, but Shade makes an aggressive play. It's all on Sogs pushing from the other side of the objective. No way this is working. They hear the Banshee, and a spray will seal the deal. Bliss go to match point. Well, that's not how they would have expected that to go potentially could have stuck the diffuser there with that maestro cam not entirely sure how much hp was left on the board as they started to place that down regardless of any decision made there bliss i i have no clue how they made that work repix with a massive double kill and then just backed up by some really nice play from shade i believe it was who was on the smoke just ensuring but they could not get past that. And that is one point secured for Bliss at the absolute least. Gunning for the full three. Even if LFO could push this all the way, still only two points. 
definitely worth fighting for, but Bliss have that momentum on their side. Three defenses in a row, a full rotation, Church, Cash, and then Jim. Now back to Church again. LFO, they've won this attack before, but I mean, that was a bit of a crazy click your fingers and the round is over moment. Shade yeah. setting up some vertical holes, looking down into Kitchen from Logistics Office. I like that. Mm. Last time around, LFO didn't look to address the roam, and now this is giving more avenues for Bliss's roamers to have an impact mm. on this push. Curious to see if they play on the back of that as well. It's a very, I mean, if you can make that work, you've currently only got only repics for the Intel denial, and that's some nice droning from LFO very early. They're going to spot that. They're going to hear all of that Intel through the audio cues. And so now, even if Bliss do decide to play on that roam, which it looks like they've sent at least one player up, that's all I saw from now. Sog's going in early here. This is much, much better from LFO. Much quicker on the droning and much quicker on the decision. There should only be one player in cash there. You can see it's the Valk. And Todd just backs away in time. Very cheeky bullet hole. Watching this angle, incredibly safe position to play for Todd. It's almost impossible to see those bullet holes. Sogs may well drone him out. He hasn't. He didn't spot it. He might check. And indeed, he sees him on the bullet hole. He's going to try and get this. But he needs to land the shot. He goes for the cautious spray. He doesn't commit. Gets back on his drone, but Sushi Huge. pushes it. That is massive. That is the top fragger down. That is huge from LFO. The bait from Sogs, you could see that was the intention all along. Just take the, the the slightest attention away from Todd. And that's what they're able to do. Oda just makes it away in time. Nazgul trying to leg it as well. Needs to be careful of the vertical line. Tries to take the fight. Ambitiously so. Whoa. Sogs cannot make that uh, at least punishable. So one quick note, Dev. Only four drones left for LFO. They are very limited for their knowledge. Repix finds a kill as well. Evens this man count. Two of those drones still in the pocket for LFO. Three out in the field. And Nasty looking to get this hatch open. Two pellets at a time. No way that's getting impact trick. A minute left. In terms of time and manpower, LFO are in a good position. They've made good progress as well. They've got these main hatches open that they need, and they have Jigstore, who's been hitting his shots at the bottom of the main stairs. A really important position. Repix has a C4. If he knows there's a player bottom main stairs, he could toss it over the church wall and take down Jigsaw. That would be wildly ambitious to try and get that, that angle, oh that time. Oh my god, what is this? Okay, Repix. That is what we like to see. Get your positioning, even if it's a little bit bold. Jigsaw doesn't seem to know completely that he is there. And I don't know if any of these players from LFO are going to come through Moto. So he's going to go unnoticed. He's going to go aggressive as well. Repix, he just makes it back oh! in time. Shuts down Sogs, but it's a beautiful trade from Jigsaw. Nasty's on the ground, delivering the plan in us. But open. Open to everything, and that shade shutting it down for Bliss. Seven five, the result goes in the play day that is number one. And a great first showing, a debut under the Bliss banner for these boys. Massive performances across the board, and a great double spray down from Shade at the end, showing his prowess with the SMG 11. A great showing across the board, very even score lines. And Bliss come out on top after a hard fought match. LFO put down in the dirt. It's a great way of putting it. <laughs> there was a play there for dirt, and they've been, well, pummeled into it. 7 5, I'm sure they would have been hoping to push that to OT. and. It was doable, it was close, but Shade from Dirt, that's a huge play. Massive to shut that down. I think the Diffuser only had a second or two left, so it was potential for a 1v2. That is ambitious at the best of times, but you gotta say, 
Repix and how bold he was in his actions, I really think caught LFO unaware quite a few times. That was quite a play. I was saying he could go for a, a really safe C4, and I noticed that Jigsaw on the other side at the bottom main stairs, he wasn't looking up this pre-made holes at the top of church. Often you'll have a, a, the attackers watching those holes to see for a C4. He wasn't doing that, completely unaware. I thought Repix could just toss a C4 over the top and find one kill. No, he wanted to bite <laughs> off way more than that. He goes deep into Modo, a massive risk. But like you'd already said, low drone game for LFO and Bliss took advantage, taking those calculated risks when they think they can get away with it. And the thing was, he was lucky as well with the execution because he just caught the sledge falling down yeah. Modo. So that could have gone a very different direction. Yeah. We do have Oda on the other side of the line. So let's get him in and have a chat. Oda, congratulations on the win. That's a big one to start. Uh, what? It, How's it feeling overall? That's a very close game as well. It feels amazing, honestly. Like, <laughs> beating LFO feels really good right now. Like, they, you know, beat us last season, put us into relegations, and just to come back and beat them, you know, it feels really good. Yeah, you guys definitely had a great showing, but it was really tight. Now, we were having a little bit of a chat when we were doing some tech testing earlier. You told me you reckon Bliss, LFO, like, Raffle, Rhythm, all of these kind of the, the teams expected to be at the bottom. You reckon they're all really, really tightly matched. But you said to me oh, that you think you guys can make top four. What, what's the go there? Oh, I just... When I look at it, I see, you know, you see Knights wildcard at the top, but uh, wildcard, unfortunately, in a situation now. But, like, other than that, like, all the teams look really close. Like, even just, like, in screams and bursting teams, like, I don't really see a top team except for Knights at the moment, to be honest. But other than that, they I lost anyone's today. got top four. Yeah, exactly, yeah. so who knows what can go. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. So uh, I, I I do want to know this because I, from what it looked like, you guys were very happy to play with some of the uh, more aggressive players. There was an occasion where you caught, I think it was Hills running across to main stairs from bar. You also had Repix, you know, going for aggressive angles, taking aggressive fights. Is this something we can expect from uh, from Bliss moving forward? Of course, aggressive plays all we're playing for this season and just love it. It's good. I love that. I am so happy to hear that. You have no idea. I can't <laughs> wait to see what this season gives. Look, do you want to say any final words, friends, families, fans out there? Oh, I just want to say a shout out Quiz and Gubba in the chat. Shout out everyone in chat. Love the fans and hashtag Bliss Up. Bliss Up. And congratulations on the new roster, of course. It's a big pickup. Thank you, boys. Thank you. So there we go, Bliss with three points in the bag early in the season as well. That's the key thing for me. Early in the season, get the three points on the board and hit the ground running. I'm sure LFO will be feeling gutted. That's another 7-5 defeat that they've <laughs> been dealt. It just feels like, I mean, I'm going to go to my stats very quickly, but I feel like LFO have had a 7-4 or 7-5 defeat I want to say nearly 80% of all their games that I've seen from Oceanic National Stage 2 last year and now leading into 2021. It's certainly been close and also a lot of overtimes in there for LFO. Their last game at OCM was an overtime loss against Knights. So definitely a tough pill to swallow for LFO who once again just barely fall short, especially after some serious highlight plays for LFO, including a flawless defense mm. and some really good attacks as well. So um, tough for them, but also yeah. Bliss. It's great to see that with that new roster, you know, they had a bit of a revamp uh, and they're still doing well. Obviously, Sushi mm. departed their team, went over to LFO. So in yep. a way, you know, Sushi had some insider insight into <laughs> Bliss. And despite that, you know, Bliss with their new roster, they're looking yep. really hot on fire and Great to see that some of the old guard, you know, players like Shade and Todd who have been in the scene since the inception of Pro League, yeah. they were hot today. They were yes. looking good. That's <laughs> they are hot. Come on, they're attractive guys. We can we can give it to them as well. It did look really good from Bliss. Really happy to hear as well that they're happy to be on that front foot, happy to put teams, you know, kind of off balance a little bit because it's going to be needed. We've got some very good teams in OCN this year. So speaking of all the good teams, let's have a look back at the results from those good teams. Mixed bag of results today. Uh, Rafflecopter obviously starting off with that 7-4 victory. I thought played incredibly well. Uh, Rhythm had their moments, but definitely fell a little bit more short than what we were expecting. But that next game, Deb, that was the oh. big one for me. 
It was massive and a huge story for Elevate coming in and rematching Knights for what, the fifth time, the fourth time, something crazy. These guys have been going head to head so many times in recent history, including just last Thursday when Knights took it and Elevate exact their revenge in an impressive fashion. And they are certainly well on their way to making the comeback with their roster, with Fisho in tow. And they're looking really good. It's, it's exciting. I think to say the very least uh and and cleaning cleaning shop in the end there what are we expecting from lfo this season i really i, I really feel like they had some promising signs there but is it going to be much of a muchness from last season it's hard man because six masters were stage one last year lfo just had the time of their lives right back yeah. when we were doing best of twos uh the map veto system was a little bit different they were just first in, they, they finally got into the tier one. They'd only been playing in you know, LPL in the past. They break in and they make a statement. They take down Wildcard. They have some insanely good games. They take maps off everyone. Uh, and then stage two, Oceanic Nationals. Real struggle during the regular season, but they had that upset of elevating the playoffs. So it really feels like hit and miss. LFO, uh, they dodged relegations just barely and now not maybe looking necessarily as crash hot as they were in the past. So, so hard to predict the next step in their journey. Great segue. Predict predictions. This is where our so-called experts go from. Oh, that's really funny. Can, um, can I look is at Xenox? Yeah, is that, that, is that, is that, that say on Xenox's call? Is that zero four? Am I seeing zero four? I think that's a, that's a donut. Um, does, does Xenox know Owen? Is that a, that's a donut, isn't it? I think, I'm pretty sure that's a donut. Look, Manic, yeah. we didn't do too too amazingly. We, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I'll take e I'll take a draw. All right, I'll take a draw. Do you want to know what the worst part is? I I truly believe that Elevate were going to be able to do something special this season. But after the the loss against uh, Knights at, at the APAC South game on Thursday night, I had my questions, and I should never mm. have doubted them. I should never have doubted them. But look. This is all fun and games. And of course, everyone at home, you do have your chance to kind of cast your vote. That's at R6 Esports OCE and at Snap Fitness AU. That's where we hold the community votes. So feel free to get involved. Go and chuck them a follow so that you can stay engaged with all of those community votes. It gives us a good indication as well as to where our knowledge is versus the community knowledge. And today, Dev, uh, I would say the community won out in the uh, in the Bliss and LFO game because we both went for LFO. We did, and we were proved wrong. I'll take it. I'll cop it. I'll wear it on the chest. So I'm happy to... to deal with that <laughs> <laughs> deal with the consequences that is our terrible terrible no nah, it wasn't a terrible prediction it was still a close game and i think at the end of the day yeah. that's that's something we can take away from lfo's point of view it's a close game uh just not not close enough but i, I feel like all the games today were close except for the wild card and border game yes all the yeah. other ones very close yeah you kind of beat me to the uh to the mark there i think when we talk about the order matchup I don't want to say we need to remove, uh, remove, sorry, uh, wild card from the equation there, but it just it looks really dire there. I'm not going to lie, yeah. and it's yeah. really you know like I am a I'm a I'm a I'm an optimistic person, and when it comes to wild card, I have a lot of time for their entire team, and I think a lot of people have a lot of respect for them, especially after what they were able to do last year. But this is a completely different situation. Yeah. Uh, something that I don't think we've really seen before. So our hearts go out to, to Wildcard and the whole team. But we can have a look at what we thought, or what we thought, what everyone thought was the MVP from today. And there's two moments that stick out to me <laughs> that are so blaringly obvious. But Cutie, the MVP, playing under the new banner of Order. And what a start to the season he's had. Oh, it was absolutely cracking cutie was nuts had some fantastic shots 100 percent kost which means every single round he either survived had a kill got traded or planted the objective that is the serious moment that massive 3k with the c4 just followed up the round afterwards with another double honestly insane and you know to cap it all off he kept kept that fire going until the end of it order 
had a fantastic game, but Cutie was an instrumental and explosive part of that. Yeah, and it's it's incredible to talk about because obviously, look, players like Joker as well, who have kind of flown under the radar in terms of like the big impact plays, was right up there with Cutie that entire game yeah. for order. Really put in the hard yards. I'm trying to think who was the the player that oh uh, God Legion from Elevate. Yeah. Absolutely ridiculous. You know, like there's these kind of nights, there's no easy call, you know we're looking at multiple players and, and trying to figure out who's had the best performance. For me, it was just a bit of show pony. I don't know about you. <laughs> oh, absolutely. And also I do want to, you know, I love MVPs and I love hyping up those big moments, but also something that Specker said when we were talking to him after the order game is there were people behind the scenes enabling that, you know, there's someone yeah. on the, you know, Valk camp. Someone's got to sit on site while someone else runs around and does all the exciting stuff. Mm -hmm. So that's another thing that it's really important to credit as well. Yeah, no, it's, it's a team it's a team effort and that's what we were trying to you know incorporate when we were talking about the order game even before specker came on is you know one two players go absolutely mental but at the end of the day it's kind of it's everyone's effort that allows that kind of thing so dev we've seen four matches on one play day out of seven i would say that this is the best start to uh, a national league that i've seen for a very long time hands down and it's so exciting to be part of a, uh, a show that is just this damn good. The graphics, I love the new layout we've got with the ticker and the big boxes and the intro video is the most hype sh you've ever seen. <laughs> Not to mention all those little videos that we've got in between the matches. Yeah. I just, I can't get enough of it. Yeah, there's a, the, the product that Ubisoft have put together for this season is I don't know, it's something to marvel at. Now let's have a look at the standings. Let's have a look and pretty much sum up what's happened today. We saw no overtime, so there's no two or one points given out. It's all straight dubs, no matter how close it was. And of course, orders out in front. Now we will, of course, have things like the rounds won, rounds lost, blah, 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 things like that that we'll be able to uh, refer to as the season goes on, because it is important. Uh, but I think overall, there were some really great games. Uh, Elevate and Bliss obviously pushing out on top. That's the kind of action that is going to set you up for the end of this year. 100%. Teams like uh, Order have also really set themselves up. Elevate's a massive one. They've taken down the team to beat this season, which is Knights. And on the lower half there, Knights and Wildcard on zero points at the bottom of the standings. Of course, we're only one play day in, but that is something to ogle at. Yeah. Yeah, it's the, the thing is, right, we've got a, a play day literally tomorrow night and <laughs> we're like it's it's just going to be rapid fire for the next couple of weeks. It is action packed and this is very quickly going to be changing. We're going to be seeing teams go up, down every which way, but definitely Knights and Wildcard on the bottom corner. Uh, it was actually nearly the bottom corner of the table. That is insane. No, like even even first play day aside I'd never expect that <laughs> yeah i'm just so hyped i think there's uh so much left in the tank for ocn this season we're only uh -huh. getting started uh it's going to be a fantastic set of games once we start to see you know what it had a wild card do against the teams that we would have thought would be more achievable to be once we start to see them playing you know your lfos and stuff will they start to get their confidence and their momentum back so that they can at least get a top four finish or even shoot for higher. What about order with yep. the new banner that they're under? Are they really finally going to be shooting for that number one spot, especially now that wild cards weakened and Knights have lost their first game? What about Knights? Can they bounce back from that? Elevate. They're finally looking better. They're finally taking down the Knights. There are so many narratives here that <laughs> I just can't wait to find out what happens next. There is so much in the air, Dev. There is so much up in the air. And that's the beautiful part. It's play day one of seven. We have so much action still to come. But for now, ladies and gentlemen, from us here behind the scenes, we've enjoyed today so much. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll be back tomorrow night. So make sure you tune in. See you then.
I'm running out of time I'm running out of money on a feeling so I'm running out of Let me see the rainbow. 